Hi there. I'm Dr. Bill Wyatt. I'm a general dentist, but I've been doing orthodontics ex exclusively for the past 44 years. I did orthodontics and regular dentistry for several years. Uh, I've got a special case here, and I wanted to show you how we uprighted some wisdom teeth on this case. It was a little over two years after we finished the orthodontics on this young man. Uh, it's a very informative case, and I hope you'll uh, stick it out. It takes a little bit longer to do. I think I worked on this guy about five years. There wasn't a lot of work in between, but uh, it takes time to do something like this. So uh, here it goes. And, uh, Stick with me on this case. It's, it'll be worth it to you. This young man came in when he was about uh, 12, almost 13 years old. Now he's missing his second molar teeth are missing. And uh, he has some other teeth back in the area. Right here is a tooth. And he's 12 and 10, almost 13 years old. And so I'm assuming the wisdom, the 12 year molar is missing. The same thing up here. So we mark these as missing. Those little double lines indicate that we think the tooth is missing right here. So I'm assuming that at this age, now this case has a lot more in it than just uprighting motors. So I want to point out several things as we go through this case. This is a case where resorption is is not f functioning properly. Uh, this is a deciduous second motor and this is a guy nearly 13 years old and the bicuspid is, hasn't eaten this tooth away. Same thing over here, the root of the bicuspid developing down low and still got this root holding that tooth in and uh, these appear there the uh, same way so now this bicuspid came in but they're extremely crowded so we're going to expand the arch and that's another thing that you point out and we'll expand the lower arch too and get room for the uh, cuspid teeth to come in and we expand the darn cuspids also and they stay out there if you do it right. I uh, hope you uh, realize that. Okay, this is where we started and I take a whole string of panorexes on this young man and I'm going to take the case completely through on panorexes and show you what happens. So this is nine of 83 when I took this this panorex right here 9 of 83 so September uh, of 1983 so let's uh, see what uh, what goes on here now this is the next panorex we take I think the thing is almost finished but look at where it is it's Crowded out cuspids up above, crowded cuspids, crowded lower anterior, and uh, a lot of crowding and a lot of deciduous teeth that need, you need to extract these teeth and you have to get in there and start doing orthodontics right after that. The guy's face is not too full, so we want to expand and bring the teeth in at this point. Uh, okay, here. It's his age 14 and 7 months, so there's quite a bit of time lapsed between that. This is now 1985, and he's 14 and 7, and he was 12 and 10 uh, back there. So we've completed the orthodontics. We've expanded, done everything in there, and now these... Uh, teeth are beginning to erupt in the mouth. This is a wisdom tooth though. Don't think it's a 12 year molar. It's coming in at nearly 14 and a half. The wisdom tooth is coming in over here. 
this wisdom tooth is headed up in this area this one is really down in the hole over here now this is 14 and 7 months uh, this video is going to take a little longer than I wanted to but stick with it it'll be worth your time now here it is 15 and 8 months and uh, these upper wisdom teeth have come on down and we put up they look just like 12 year molars but they're they're actually wisdom teeth she just didn't congenitally didn't have 12 year molars all right we make a retainer and put it in his mouth and you can make the retainer where you hold the outer wire up on the teeth back here and you put a little acrylic around the edge of this tooth when it gets in where you want it uh, and that will hold this tooth from erupting into the mouth and you have to hold this one so you don't want to get the tooth down past the occlusal plane here to get this tooth to come up you see so that's another trick in this case that you need to learn how to make a retainer that will keep the Sec the last tooth back there from erupting down too far. Now these are wraparound retainers with absolutely nothing crossing the occlusal plane. Uh, and you can make them where they stay in. We'll show you some videos on that too. Now we've got to deal with these two. We have teeth, the wisdom teeth on the bottom are just dragging their feet. So we go along here one of them makes it almost makes it in the other one we have to really uh, do some electro surge and then we'll show it to you and this is the fourth panorex and this is in 710 of 86 and he's eight, 15 and 8 months at this time but we've just got him in an upper retainer that's all and he comes in so we watch him whatever time it takes for these wisdom teeth to get up in there so here he is 17 years old in 87 and the wisdom teeth on the bottom have come up and butted into the uh, six year molars back here now this one on the right side right here we managed to get it in by putting big separators in here that'll push the tooth back a little bit and then you take them out and it'll grow forward a little if you have to put another one in and so you can bring a lot of teeth in by using big separators you have to learn how to pop them through there with dental floss and pull them underneath and pull them up in there you can put a separator in before you can see the wisdom tooth coming in if you learn how to do that that's another big trick you learn here over here we realized we were going to have to upright this one so I have to come in and do some work with electro surge to clear that tooth and we're going to put a little uh, device in here with a spring the spring going down and we can't insert it to the more like that and come up to hook it over here and put some force on it and we'll bring that tooth out of that opening and just move it back and that's where the uprighting comes in uh, okay we go on to the that's a, the six panorexers actually this is just a part of one I just enlarged that so you can see that better so this is a tooth we're going to move back and end up with this tooth something like that where it, uh, it comes in and opposes that uh, 12 year molar and wisdom tooth. These are all <laughs> wisdom teeth. I get them confused. We have to hook this behind. So we'll show that again. Now, here is the, I don't see what number of panorex this is, but uh, this is 1988 and 830 of 88. And this tooth is coming in and we have bonded this spring on this wisdom tooth right here. You see that spring right there. And we've hooked it. Now we didn't, you don't have to have these case, cases in braces up right there. We just 
bonded this wire on these teeth. It's just bonded onto the teeth. And that works beautifully well. And you can kick a tooth out like that. And it doesn't take very long. And it's not a very expensive thing to do. And I, every cotton picking dentist ought to know how to do this. I mean, Peter Donis and regular dentists, I don't care whether you're a paradise or if you do any kind of a restorative work and you for God's sakes don't put a crown on a tooth like this I mean tilt the blooming thing back up and then crown the tooth if it has to be most of them don't need a crown after you if you learn how to do this and God it's such a simple easy thing for dentists to do and you would be surprised how many dentists have no foggy idea of how to do that and orthodontists certainly don't because they're not going to deaden the tissue and go in there and do the surgery and they don't send them off to a surgeon maybe in some cases where they've got a team working on somebody they'll uh, know how to do this but every dentist ought to know how to do this especially Peter Donis on ectopic erupted teeth it just tears me up that they Peter Donis will not just get behind it and get in there and teach your students how to do orthodontics. I don't give a darn what the orthodontics say in the, the university. That's where the holdup is. The orthodontist don't want the dentist to touch uh, any kind of orthodontics. This is something every dentist ought to know how to do. It ought to be taught in dental school. To upright teeth. There's no sense in letting somebody go through life with the teeth tipped over like that. So anyway, I'll quit preaching to you and get on and show a little bit of this to you. Now, this is the, I don't get to use 17 and 9. Now, I started out when the guy's 12. See, this takes time. So no orthodontic students going to treat anybody like this it takes five or six years to get through it they they will never know how to do something like this unless they get out and start doing it now when you hook this up it's got to be right behind your bond over here because this wire is going to slide as that tooth moves out and up just don't forget to do that it doesn't matter where this tooth is if you can get underneath it and bump it, it'll push it up and push this down. And when it gets through, they'll be lined up good, just on their own. You don't have to worry about them. Just put that on and turn them loose, and then thing will go. Now, here it is, the number eight Panorex. And this is uh, in 1988. I think I may have gotten some of these dates mixed up in here a little bit, but you you get the point. It's, it's further down the line here. And these teeth are in the mouth now, and I'm, I'm going to go through this whole case. Now, this guy is 18 and two months, and we started out when he was 12 something, see. Now, th this is good orthodontics. You're not going to do... Invisalign, I mean, that just hurts me to see people go in there and think they can do something like this with a bunch of junk. You know, you cannot do this unless you learn a little orthodontics, see. And I don't care if you're an orthodontist or a general dentist or a or whoever you are. If you're a dentist, you ought to know how to upright teeth. And it just burns me up at... Uh, you're not taught this in dental school. This is ridiculous. Okay, here this is. This is February of 1990, and that is that tooth that was laying down like that. It's up here. The dirt bone is fine on it, everything. All I did is just upright it and let it come in contact. It's in a nice class one relation, you see here. And that, I've been working with this guy I didn't do anything for the last uh, year or so but this is two of 90 
and I started out, I think it was in 83 or something like that. Uh, I think I've got a, one more picture of him uh, when it was two of, that's two of 90, that's the whole case. And it looks darn good. And it makes me feel good this young man's mouth would have been a holy mess if he had gone without orthodontics, you know. And how many orthodontists would have expanded the mouth? They think, oh, God, you can't expand this. That's a bunch of bull. You can expand anybody. And so don't take all that stuff. They've been taught things, and they believe them, and that is not true. Now, this is two of uh, two, uh, nearly ni near 91 really now here I'm going to go through the case clinically and show you the pictures of the teeth now you do have to learn how to use electrosurge or your lasers uh, I've tried two or three different lasers there it's a so darn slow I don't like to mess with them I can take an electrosurge and cut this tissue out of there while you're thinking about it with a darn laser. Now, you got to, you don't have a bracket on there, so there's no metal in there, and you, and you can just whack this teeth tissue out of there and take it off, clean this tooth up a little bit, and get it dry and everything, and etch it, and then you can bond your tube. This is just a tube bonded on the side of this tooth. Now, any dentist can learn how to do that. That is not a difficult thing to do. And this spring, is a, this is a mirror shot of that. See, so this part over here is not in the, in the mirror. I'm shooting the mirror. And this is where you're seeing the actual tooth down here. This is the mirror up there. Hope that doesn't confuse you. Now, as we go to the next we bonded the tube and we put the little spring in there and you could have made the spring simpler you could have just done it like this and come off and you can only insert it at an angle like that uh, so we activated and tied it so I could insert it with a little more uh, spring pressure on it but you could you could bend this up and where you could get that wire put it in there then you go go over here and measure where you put your hook in the mouth that's simple you can do that any dentist can make that little old spring if you can't do that I feel sorry for you but that's a simple thing to do putting this on doing the electrosurge is nothing but the orthodontists are not going to do that they won't deaden the tissue they won't they ought to teach the orthodontist how to do a little bit of dentistry and get away from all this mess of not injecting the patient and all this mess. Let them inject it. Let them do a little dentistry. There'll be much an orthodontist that's been a general dentist for, for a few years is a lot better orthodontist. And if your insurance and the insurance tells you what to do, that's a bunch of bull too. They ought to let you do regular dentistry and orthodontics. And uh, you could come in and deaden and cut this tissue away and bond your darn bracket on the side of the tooth and do this thing. So anyway, let's go to the next picture. Now this is a spring that I use, but you don't have to. This is more complicated. I activated actually this wire was going out there. I tied it up like that and tied it. Then I could try it in the mouth this way and try my deal over here and make my little hook. Then once you get it in there, then cut this wire right here. And this thing, this tries to spring back out then uh, to a more of a level. So you'd have about that much activation on it. In other words, this would be going out here and you'd have to raise it up and hook it. And it would do the activation. Actually, you can make them go in this way and put it in with as much activation as you can. Then you reach up in here with an optical plier, uh, the double optical plier, 
puts the cup part up here and it puts the bar down here and you mash that together and it'll bend this wire off down in that direction. So you can get a tremendous amount of torque or lifting power on this spring when you put in, but use a rectangular wire. You don't want it rolling in the in the slot. You don't want this wire to roll. You want to put it into a rectangular slot so it stays in the same size. All right, so let's go on from here. And now you don't need the person in braces. This guy, this guy's been out of his braces for over two years now, and I, you just bonded a wire on these teeth, you see, and bonded this back here. And the force, you're put, pushing all these teeth down, and you're not going to intrude this whole bunch of teeth in here, picking that, that wisdom tooth up. Then we fix this wire where it just goes over, and hooks right, I think we made it where it goes behind that tooth right there. We'll see later back here. All right, that's, you know how to do that. That doesn't take any brains to learn how to bond a wire on the teeth. It doesn't, just put a couple of circles in the end of it, you know, where, you leave where it fits the teeth, and come in and put a little bonding material on each one of them. Anybody can do that. So you can do this whole movement thing. So don't think it's so important. Now there's one thing you got to remember. This hook has to be right over here because this tooth is going to move backwards as it goes up. As it goes up, that just makes sense. It rotates around a point down here. So when it straightens up, this point is going to go back where this is bonded and this tooth will move over right up there so anybody can see that so I want to encourage you to learn how to do it you can take this darn video and just go over until you learn how to do it so we're looking down on from the top you see we got it up pretty close it can slide all the way back here before it has to start sliding out of the tube back here that's what I don't want it to come out of this tube so watch the thing go. We're going to go through it clinically now. All right, he's in the, in the retainer. He's in a good retainer. There's nothing going across the, the occlusal surface in here. And we've got a bite plate on it where his teeth down here. I don't have anything on them. They just go into a groove on this retainer. And if they wear that religiously, now so I don't, I recommend putting a three to three on your lower anterior to hold them really because people don't wear the retainer enough to have your groove keep them in place. But that's another thing to learn on this case. All right, there's the retainer from the other side. And this is a darn good case, you see. You saw how this kid's teeth looked. See, we can't expand, you can't do it. That's a bunch of crap. You can expand anybody walking and breathing that can get into your office. I don't care how old they are or what. You can expand the horse. You may not separate the, the palate, but we can separate palates up into their 30s and sometimes in their 40s just by putting spring between the two central teeth where most of the bone is. But we won't try to cover that today on this. And that's a well-treated case. You can see this little bite plate that the lower teeth fit into that. If they wear that retainer, the bite will not deepen. Again, I didn't have it rigged up yet to hold those teeth up. If you add a little acrylic on this, and then you put a little pad out here on both sides, it won't let your retainer go down, and it won't let the teeth go down. So uh, that's another big factor to learn here. Now, here we go, and there is the tooth. The other one has gotten in. We did it with separators. Now we're bringing this in. Here's your little spring wire coming over, coming over there and hooking over that tooth, and uh, it's kicking this tooth out. This is eight of eighty-eight. What I've got there. 
on that. Now, looking at it from the side, you see this little hook is slipped back part of the way, and this is straightened up part of the way right there. Uh, now, here the tooth is darn near straight, and you see this hook has moved back from about here back to there, and this tooth is darn near in place now. And you can do that with seeing this guy just two or three times, you know, to straighten the tooth up. And this is where we did the lecture surge. We took some of that tissue off. God knows it. You need to learn how to do that. You don't even need a darn laser. Uh, I, we had a couple of lasers there in the office, and uh, I never did like them. They were too darn slow. So anyway, there the tooth is clinically 10 of 88 and now it's occluding against these upper teeth right up here and we can take this off at this time and these are wisdom teeth they are not 12 year molars so and that you don't take a dead gum Superman to do this. You can trim that, you can bond that on there, you can bend that little old loop, stick it in there, come up, measure. Well, I got a bunch of junk coming. You come over and measure where your hook is. You can, anybody, bend that little hook, then raise this thing up, hook it over there. If you want to put more activation, take an optical plier, put the bow up here and the bar down here, mash it. And then put that wire down, and you can put all kind of pressure on that tooth and tip it out of there. And you don't have to grind the top one off. You don't have to mess with the wisdom. It'll shove the darn wisdom tooth backwards coming out of there. So I hope to God uh, people will catch on to this. And I am just, I don't know what to say to the people that run the pedodontic deal where they won't let their students do any orthodontics just because the orthodontists in the school have a little more clout and come over and tell them they can't do orthodontics and be pedodontists. Let the orthodontists do a little dentistry and let the pedodontists do some early interceptive orthodontics. When I first started into this there was no orthodontics being done in the preventive and interceptive area that I knew of. And now this was back in the, the 50s, in the, uh, in the early 60s. I've been doing this for a long, long time. And uh, the orthodontists now are doing all these things because other people are doing it, you see. So they are doing it now. There are a lot of wonderful, fine orthodontists. I don't not bitching at orthodontics, but I'm bitching that they, the ones that are so afraid of losing a little business uh, and don't want anybody else, it's just a financial thing. But you pedodontists, God knows you need to learn how to do this and do some of this ectopic eruption that I've shown you in here. So I'm going to push up. I think this is the, yeah, that's the last picture in this series and I hope to God you uh, Dennis will learn how to do this it's something every dentist ought to know how to do there is absolutely no sense in putting bridges on tilted teeth that is ridiculous that you haven't been taught that in dental school so uh, I get <laughs> really excited when I do this, but God knows you need to learn this. Now, I'm just a few months, about 10 months out of 90 years old, and so I don't care what I say, <laughs> I guess, so uh, hang in there, and if you don't think you can do this, sit down and go over this darn video till you learn how to do it, so I'm going to shut up and... Uh, and stop this thing. I hope you get to 
learn it. Thank you now. I hope you get something out of this.